Hi, in this short video I'm going to be looking at how one can use the supplied API testers uh, for DQMH modules as a great debug utility uh, when calling a DQMH module from another application, uh, either a LabVIEW application or perhaps from a test and sequence. Um, these API testers not only are really useful in proving out the API methods of a DQMH module, but also make great debug utilities. Let's go ahead and start with the shipping examples that ship with the DQMH toolkit. So, for those of you who haven't seen the shipping examples before, once you've installed the DQMH toolkit from the LabVIEW Tools Network, I'm using DQMH toolkit version 2. Simply go to the LabVIEW, exam uh, LabVIEW example finder and you've got a couple of options. You can go ahead and look in fundamentals, loops and structures, and you'll see DQMH fundamentals, or you can just simply search for DQMH. And this launches the Fundamentals LabVIEW project. Okay, so let's re-familiarize ourselves a little bit with uh, a DQMH module and its API tester. So in this instance, um, I've got a couple of DQMH modules. Uh, the ones I'm particularly interested in for the purposes of this demo are the Thermal Chamber Controller DQMH demo, and we'll look very briefly at the device under test clonable DQMH. So we've got two different types of DQMH module. The thermal chamber is a singleton module, uh, that is a DQMH module where we can guarantee there will only be a single instance of that module in memory at any one time. And then we have the clonable form of the DQMH, uh, which we use for our device under test because we may be testing multiple devices in parallel. So if we open the testers folder we can see that we've got an API tester for each of those two module types. So let's have a look at the API tester for our thermal chamber first. So let's go ahead and open that and run this VI and just to give a brief tour we can start an instance of the thermal chamber controller. We can show its front panel. If I just move it over to the right a little bit so we can see that we're interacting with it, we can do things that you might typically want to do with a thermal chamber, such as set the set points, change the ramp rate, enable or disable heating. So let's go ahead and change that ramp, uh, change that set point and enable the heating. We can see that the heater was switched on and we've now got a new set point that we're moving towards. Let's go ahead and increase that ramp rate a little bit. We can see that the new ramp rate was sent from the API tester to the thermal chamber controller DQMH module which is running asynchronously and it's now achieved our target set point. So that gives us a brief overview of the types of things that we can do using our API tester. So we're calling the methods of the DQMH module. So one of the things I've talked about in previous blog posts is the benefit of writing a lot of your code using a DQMH module uh, if you're using test stands. Because ultimately what this means is that once you've launched a DQMH module, the test stand sequence becomes a very thin sequence. It becomes simply a series of calls to the API of the DQMH module, which is running asynchronously to the test stand sequence. So for example, in this case, our test stand sequence would simply be responsible for launching the DQMH module for the thermal chamber controller calling the public API method to set the set point, calling the public API to set the ramp rate, enable the heater, and then simply querying the DQMH module to see if we're at the target temperature. So all of the functional code then becomes contained within the DQMH module and not within the test stand sequence. This means that all of those methods can be debugged in isolation in the LabVIEW environment before we start introducing the concept of a test and sequence. So it allows us to do an awful lot of debugging using the great tools that LabVIEW provides for debugging and it allows us to do that before we actually start interacting with the module from test stand. So let's go ahead and stop that module now and stop the VI running. So now what we'd like to do is let's have a look at how we can now use this DQMH module, use its API tester as a kind of a peek and poke utility. Um, the video refers to it as sniffers, uh, that terminology kind of seems to be more prevalent in the US than in, in Europe, but basically 
use this um, API tester as a peek and puck utility, allowing us to query to uh, query data from the DQMH module whilst it's being called from some other application, be it a LabVIEW application or a test and sequence. In addition, another benefit of this is that we're able to use that DQMH module API tester to inject data into a DQMH that's module that is running whilst it's being called by test stand. Uh, so this is this is a really useful debug utility because it allows us to inject uh, values, potentially edge case values, uh, and, and really test that behavior of the test stand sequence uh, or, or even debug further our the interaction between test stand and our DQMH module um, using that tester. So let's go ahead and see how that works. So one small change that we do need to change that we do need to make in order to use our API tester as a as a, a sniffer or this peek and poke utility is to change the application instance of our API tester. So we now need to right click and change the application instance from my computer to main application instance. Now we've done that we can now interact with our module as it's been called from test stand. So we've got a number of test stand uh, sequences that ship with uh, the, the DQMH toolkit. The first one merely interacts with the thermal chamber controller. So let's go ahead and play with that one first. So this is the shipping example. This is the most basic of the three shipping examples. And all it really does is it uh, configures a set point of 75 degrees, configures a ramp rate of 5 degrees per second, and then does some configuration of the thermal chamber, such as starting the DQMH module, um, disabling the heating until we've programmed the ramp rate and the set point, and then enabling the heating, and then basically waiting until we get to temperature. Once we get to temperature, it closes the DQMH module, and returns a result for the overall test sequence. So let's go ahead and just see that in action first. So let's go ahead and select test UUTs. Enter an imaginative serial number. And here we can see that our DQMH module is running. It's set the set point at 75 degrees, set the ramp rate to five degrees per second, and it's approaching temperature. So in this case, we're kind of fortunate because our DQMH module doesn't run headless. It has a fairly descriptive user interface that allows us to see what's happening um, as that temperature adjustment is being performed, and then we get the nice test stand report. So that's one of the great things about test stand and this kind of method of programming. If we can keep a lot of the functionality into the DQMH module, we can really find an easy way to code our application using test stand and take advantage of all the great things that test stand offers such as really nice inbuilt reporting database integration user management uh, but maintaining the functionality within a reusable labview based module uh, that provides easy debug using the great tools that labview provides so we just saw that we had a uh, a fairly visual indication of what what was going on, but that might not be typical. A lot of our DQMH modules may run headless. Uh, we don't want to clutter the operator interface with too much information, uh, but likewise when things don't work, we maybe would benefit from seeing more. So let's make a small change to the test and sequence so that that now runs headless. So I'm going to skip the step that actually goes ahead and makes the front panel visible. And let's execute one more time. And now you can see I don't have any uh, front panel showing me what's happening. I, I have no visual indication of where I am. I don't know whether I'm close to the temperature limit, whether I've got another few minutes to wait for me to get there. Um, so I've got less information. So this is where our API tester could come in useful. So we've changed the application instance of our API tester. Let's make another small change. Let's change the target temperature 
so that we can just observe what's happening. So instead of 75 degrees, let's set a target temperature of 250. And let's just rename that step so that it makes sense. Save those changes. And go ahead and execute our sequence. So again, it's set to run headless. OK to that. And away it goes. So if we now go to our DQMH modules API tester, we can see that the module's running. It's returned a Boolean true. We know that the module is running. And very simply, we can, uh, we can choose to refresh and see what the actual temperature is. So here we've got, we know that the te temperature set point was 250, and we can refresh and see what the temperature is doing. So let's go ahead and change the scale of that quickly. And we can see that we are indeed ramping towards it. Now, this is one of the beauties of using the DQMH API tester. We can actually use the API tester to inject a new value. So now I've slowed down the ramp rate significantly, and you can see that that new value has been taken on board by the DQMH module and is slowing down the rate at which the, the chamber approaches the target temperature. Of course, once it gets there, the sequence is going to continue because the DQMH module is running asynchronously. So let's have a look where we are now. We're, we're almost there. Um, just a few more degrees to go. Let's, let's go ahead and change that ramp rate again, just to make sure we get there quicker. And we're there. So the sequence should be ending now. Okay, great. So that gave us an example of how we can use our API tester not only to sniff, sample, peek at data values that are being sent by our DQMH module, but also we can use it to inject new data values into the module whilst it's being controlled by some other application, albeit LabVIEW or Test Stand. So this would make a really great debug utility to actually go ahead and change the behavior of the DQMH module whilst it's being called from Test Stand. So let me go ahead and close that particular module's API tester. And let's go ahead and open one of the other shipping examples and just to show one more benefit of using the DQMH API testers. So in this particular example, actually wrong one Chris, in this particular example the third and most complex of the shipping examples, here we are communicating not only with the DQMH module that is uh, carrying out the chamber control function that we've just seen, but we also have control of the device under test DQMH modules and in this case it's a clonable DQMH module and we have multiple devices under test. Now for those of you who've carried out uh, debugging of re-entrant clones, when using LabVIEW alone it's tough enough to actually go ahead and do that. So once you introduce test stands into the mix things get a little bit more complex, it's harder to debug, to understand which of your modules is perhaps be behaving not the way you would expect. It all gets a little bit tricky. So here's where the DKMH modules really do come into, their, uh, come into their own. So let's go ahead and start the execution of our batch sequence uh, of devices under test. So we've got four devices under test here, so we'll have four instances of the device under test DQMH module. So let's just give each one of these a serial number and start the test. So I've got testing underway on four devices under test and we can see temperature adjustment is being performed. Let's go ahead and launch our device under test. API tester. So I'm going to start that running. And I can simply hit this refresh button uh, to get uh, to register for all of the broadcast events of all of the module device under test DQMH modules that are running. So if I click on this,
schoolboy error by Chris, I forgot to change the application instance. So let's go ahead and do that. And when I click the refresh button, I can see I've got four instances of the device under test. DQMH module running. And we can see those there. There are the four module instances. They're not always visible because we close them at various points during the test sequence. So this is great. I can see that I've got four clones uh, running. But the really nice thing about using the API tester, and this is a particularly tricky thing to do, is if I actually want to go and debug the block diagram of one of those clones, that's, that's quite a, a tough task to accomplish. Well, using my API tester, I can simply select the clone that I'm interested in and click on the show block diagram for troubleshooting boolean and I get to see the block diagram of that particular clone instance that I'm interested in. This is a really powerful tool uh, when debugging a clonable DQMH module that's being called from test stand. Uh, from those of you who have tried to do that before, you'll appreciate how powerful that really is. So using that API tester on the thermal chamber allowed me to interact with the module even though it was being called from test stand. It allowed me to interact with it, to inject new values, to sniff and peek at data that it was producing. When I'm dealing with multiple DQMH modules of the clonable variety, the API tester really does come into its own, allowing me to show the block diagram of a particular clone instance. Again, the same rules apply. I can peek and poke, I could inject values, I could um, read values back from the DQMH module whilst it's being uh, controlled by test stand. However, being able to pr uh, select a particular clone instance to interact with and even potentially show its block diagram really does give me a great debugging tool. So. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this was useful and uh, happy wiring.